Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Christian. Uh, I can connect to Hjalmar's story in a lot of ways because I was here as a student myself in the second year of Caleb. Mm -hmm. And then for six years I, uh, I was a teacher here. Uh, learned to be a strength coach actually. <laughs> and uh, I actually went through this transition when Caleb started clipping. Uh, I think it was the year when I started. And because you started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the funny thing was, it has evolved in a lot of ways during the years. I remember the first year we, we had some uh, lectures doing two hours and 40 minutes lectures about muscle physiology. <laughs> and it was really just try to try to get through it. We did a lot of uh, mistakes in the beginning. And yeah, and if I just may add to that, that was one of the, our first problems because teachers tend to speak for 40 minutes. Really? Yeah, because really? the class time is 40 <laughs> minutes. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yes, we, we talk too much. Yeah. Okay, so I have some, uh, I'm going to tell you a story of NU, which is a, a new school in Iceland. Uh, and I have material for 20, 25 minutes, so I have to fast forward through some of it. Uh, you have 20 minutes? Yeah, 20 minutes. Uh, but a, a lot of Actually, Kaylee had, owns a lot of things at, at NU, actually. Because I brought a lot of ideas from, from my teaching years here in, in Kaylee and brought it into NU. So NU is, uh, uh, I'm just going to tell you in 50 minutes about what it is, what works. And somewhere there came a headline that I was going to tell you how to found an independent school in Iceland. I, I, have, to, I have to skip over that. Okay, uh, what is NU? It's an independent, it's upper secondary school of the right term, I'm, I'm not sure, I think so. Age 12 to 16, uh, where we have emphasis on sports and uh, flipped learning. We started last autumn, we're a small school, we are expanding slowly. Uh, the idea is to be not larger than 1900 students school, perhaps. Um, and then later just start another school with emphasis on um, art, arts uh, or, uh, you know, some other, other topics. Uh, these are people that I brought with me into the uh, organization. Uh, There's a, a good story about the principal. Uh, he has been, uh, he's a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm a musicologist. I come from another world. Uh, but uh, my principal, he, uh, he was on his way out of the school system. He started some MBA uh, education and, and saw it as a way out of the as a school system because he wanted to do something else. And I, on, on his way out, I brought him back in because I sold him the idea to start a new school, an independent school, which is kind of a crazy idea in Iceland because I always tell the joke that it's probably more easy to get uh, a, a nuclear power plant started in downtown Reykjavik than an uh, independent school. <laughs> so uh, it took a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, to get it through. Uh, and yeah, not more about that. This is where we are located in Hafnifjörður. Close to, close to Reykjavik. Uh, our aim is, in short, to offer choice and have positive impact. Not only on the life of the young kids, but also on the Icelandic education system. I myself, I have kids, uh, I have uh, some opinions about it, what's, how, what, what, what we're doing good, what we're not doing so good, and I just want to change it. It's really simple. Uh, so, just to name a few special features, what we're doing differently in NU, we, we actually just, uh, it, it took over two years of, of, of brainstorming, um, creating the idea behind the, the school, and the, the, the main point where we started was just, okay, what if this was the first school in the history of mankind? That was the idea. And we really, we, we ourselves, me and Kisli, we, we really have to, had to struggle with our own uh, uh, ideas of, of how it was to be, why, because it was this way when we ourselves were in schools. So we had, uh, we were prejudiced ourselves how you should be doing, doing it. But uh, we don't have any books. Every student has a computer, a small laptop computer that I'll show you. Uh, we spent 1,500 kronos on paper last year for the graduation certificates mostly. Um, uh, but our aim is to use no paper at all. Uh, 
we start each day in, in daylight. Here in Iceland, it's really important because, uh, like most of you know, we have sun coming up perhaps 10 o'clock in, in December and, and going down around 3.30 or something. Uh, so we start school at 9 o'clock in the morning, but in December and January, we start at 10 o'clock. So there's always daylight outside when the kids are coming to school. And we know that this is important, but with uh, you know, this, the body's activity in, in daylight, it differs with you know, coming to school when it's, when it's dark outside. Uh, we created this idea of a study walk. Uh, I myself listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of audiobooks, uh, and I think in, in the last couple of years, most of my own studying have been, you know, done while walking. And I, I really dislike the idea that we're sitting all the time as, as, a, as a physical coach, as, a, as, a, as an athlete. Uh, and I brought this into this study walk idea, which is actually just going out for one lesson. We, our lesson has 25 minutes. And walking and listening to audiobook, uh, walking and uh, uh, discussing some problem or some, some topic. Uh, we limit the time that each student can sit uh, during the day, and we we uh, they have various uh, study positions that we, that I'll show you on the next slide. I think we believe that by using flipped learning, we are the first school to really be able to provide individualized learning. So uh, everything's flipped. Um, we we uh, work in periods where we take three topics and focus on them for three weeks. Uh, and our lessons are 25 minutes. Both of these radical changes have been just perfect. We actually tried some different ideas, four topics for four weeks, uh, two topics for three weeks, uh, but we found out that there are an initial idea about three topics for three weeks was really a, a great balance. It's, it has really worked for us. And um, 25 minutes lesson, I come back to that. And what we are doing is that we are trying to borrow uh, these kids who are all athletes. They come to us. We, we sell them the idea that this is uh, a great environment for young athletes who really want to excel in their sport and uh, learn more about how it is to be a, an athlete. And, and what we try to do is we, we, we think of... Uh, this, th their intrinsic uh, motivation as a red thread through all our curriculum that we try to hang everything onto. So, so uh, we use every chance to give uh, you know, their learning a meaning through their sport. And, and you just have to be creative, you know, how to adapt all kinds of uh, math problems to the sizes of a pitch, of uh, how was the how big is, a, is, a, is the penalty box in Hamble? You know, how are you going to calculate it, etc. Uh, could talk more about that. But. And we, we do, uh, I think the right term is life coaching, math theory. Uh, all our students get uh, five to six uh, life coaching interviews. So all of our uh, coaches, all of our uh, teachers are life coaches also. Um, yes. Um, all right, what works? A lot of things work. We, we uh, expected about 10,000 problems. I only had like 10. Uh, we were really well prepared. Uh, some things were just, uh, just really worked in the beginning, like our uh, classroom. This is our classroom. You see the kids. And uh, we have three classrooms. Each is about 75 square meters. I think it's probably roughly around this size. Uh, Longer, more elongated. So we have a. I don't know if you can really tell. So we have those uh, standing tables here. We have only four to five tables in each room, and uh, we actually, yeah we actually took up one. We only have four now, and then we have a uh, space for twelve mattresses on the floor, um, and uh, just by removing all the books and all the paper, you know the space became enormous. Uh, the use of the space is so, uh, it, it's really good, it, it's, it's close to perfect, because we found that we, we, we don't have, need any shelves or uh, 
you know, all the all the space that the the books and paper take, you 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 can't imagine. Just just th think about it. Just go into your office next time you go in there and think about how much space the paper takes. Uh, so we created a lot of square meters uh, for the kids to, to move in. Um, what also works great is this our, our, our idea that, that you only sit for maximum 25 minutes. And uh, what happens when you, when you sit, just focus on yourself right now, all of you are in a flexed spinal position right now. So and, and a, sitting, a sitting posture is, is not good for our health. I could talk about that for a long time. So after ha having, you know, being sat down for 25 minutes, we want to uh, uh, we want to balance the body. So going from a flex position into a extended position, where the thoracic spine needs to extend, you have to use the back muscles to really extend and work in this position. And then you have like uh, reset the body, realign the body into a, the right position. And then you go into our most natural position when we're awake, which is standing. We are created, the human body is created to be standing for at least six to eight hours a day. At least, we know, we know this. Uh, and the kids just rotate for 25 minutes. We work, narrow focus, and for five minutes, we go into wide, wide focus. So you can stand up, you can have a drink, you can uh, go to the toilet, you can do pull-ups or work on our kettlebells for one minute or two or whatever, uh, take fr get fresh air, and then go back to the narrow focus. Because we know that nobody holds narrow, good focus for 80 minutes. It just doesn't happen. Nobody does. Uh, so we don't have a uh, three minutes. Breaks. Breaks. Breaks, yeah. We don't have breaks, three minutes. Three minutes to get free from something. We don't have. We don't have that because uh, you don't have to have breaks from something that you like to do or that you want to do. Like we said to the kids, nobody during their practice later in the day wants to go outside and, and take a pee. If it, you know, pretend he wants to have to <laughs> take a pee or check his phone or something. He's there because he wants to be there. So he doesn't have to get breaks from it. Um, so really positive feedback from the kids, uh, and also uh, a lot of things. Just just with the th so this is like uh, some you know, panorama view of our uh, of our classroom. Uh, so what you also see is that we have kind of decentralized the classroom. We don't have any teachers' table. We just moved it up. Okay, we have a big screen here in the corner, uh, but otherwise it's decentralized. Every kid is its own center. And the teacher is just walking, trying to help. And, and, and one thing that we found out, which was, which was actually a, an accident, the initial idea was that we were gonna put up, uh, not clocks, not traditional clocks, but we were gonna put up a clock where we had, uh, had just new here, upside, and here. And then at the five minutes mark here, 25 minutes and 55 minutes, we had a, just a, a line. So the clock would go like this, 25 minutes you're working, here, wide focus, 25 minutes working, five minutes. And, and then that would just go on and on. Um, but we did it, we, had, we hadn't put up the clocks in the beginning of the year, so there was a lot of things to think about in the beginning. Uh, but after a couple of weeks or, or, or months, we started getting uh, feedback from the kids that they actually really liked it, not having any bells ringing or clocks ticking, and they experienced the, 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 some kind of timeless feeling. And uh, all of our kids said that the school kids just passed by like this, bam, really fast. And it's because it's be, uh, there's a lot of reason for it, I think, but the the removing the clock, I think, is uh, helps with it, helps to create this feeling of, I'm playing, I'm learning because I like it, I'm, I'm, I'm learning by playing, I'm, I'm allowed to move, we have, we have students that are, you know, dancers and, and love being by the standing tables and just, because it's their way of just, you know, while processing information, they're moving. 
So we know that somebody, you know, a lot of folks, you know, both have to move and some even, you know, have to move when, you know, taking in information. Um, so we, this is just our uh, weekly schedule. There's uh, <coughs> what you see is that we don't have math. We don't have. It's just you're here. That's it. It's, uh, this word is just you're here. From 9:30 to 13, you're here. Uh, the colored uh, boxes are, you know, something that doesn't change between weeks. Uh, but we felt that uh, this. I'm trying to show you here that we're really trying to do things in a simple way, <coughs> even uh, almost minimalistic way. Uh, and the kids are very really little uh, focused on uh, the time schedule. What's what's happening tomorrow? When is this uh, working period over, etc. Um, we start each day by something that we call uh, Nuvera, which is a uh, direct translation would be now be, which is a uh, word that we know uh, that we use a lot. Just you know, just be, relax, be. It sounds like zombie. Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> now be, now be. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the first th 30 minutes of each day start with uh, some form of uh, mental reboot, which would be something like uh, breathing exercise, different forms of meditation. We, we, we show them a lot of different methods and they, after like five, six months, they, they find their own that really works for them and, and continue working with that. Also, a physical reboot. If you if you need if this is your posture, you might need to do some strengthening exercises to straighten out the back. Or if you're a female athlete where uh, knee injuries are common, you need to activate the glute muscles. So we teach them stuff like this to to get get them physically active or closer to their like natural state. Somebody might might need a massage. Somebody stretching yoga postures whatever. Uh, and the last 10 minutes of this session is uh, all about reviewing their values, their goals, and projects or the tasks of this day or tomorrow of the week. So just taking the course, okay, let's go. Let's go and then start working. Uh, our technical sol solutions uh, have really worked. I'm a big proponent of these Chromebooks computers. They are, they are cheap. Uh, and unsexy and stable and reliable and there's there's no way of mixing things up in the kids uh, compared to the iPads this this is this is not sexy they they almost don't even want to take it home with them they were allowed to buy it uh, it only costs about 150 dollars now today uh, and they were allowed to buy it uh, after the school year for five thousand there was one who bought it. But they, they're using it all the time. They're really lightweight, easy to move around. You can almost, you know, I use it all the time at home, just like this. And uh, that's just this Google, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, not in that way. I'm not selling Chrome or, uh, or Google or something, but they just made a solution that really works, really simple. Google Classroom is a really nice tool, and, and, and everything just worked. We were flipping. Students learning. Uh, I think we're the only school doing this. Nice that somebody, uh, some schools are using flipped learning in, in one course or two courses. We did from the beginning with all the courses, which was a huge step. This was something that I think you or somebody else said you, that you shouldn't be doing, but it worked. It really worked. Um, so uh, yeah, I could talk a lot, a long time about this solution, and we've saved so much m money. I actually called the, uh, my, my home, hometown, Hapnevede, called the, 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 the heads of the of educational matters in, in my town and, and told them, okay, I'll, I'll show you a way to save tens of millions of kronos. <laughs> I, I know a way, believe me. Because I know one uh, principal in another school and he told me what everything cost. <laughs> Paper, 1.3 million kronos, this for the windows, Licenses, all that, uh, hiring two computer guys to administrate all the, all this. Okay, I can save you tens of millions of kronos. Um, at last, uh, 
Self-determination theory and flipped learning. Self-determination theory, I'm not going to go into that, I'll, we don't have time for that, but uh, this was just true love. This is our like uh, philosophical uh, ground, uh, which is, we try to wrap around everything that we're doing, uh, about intrinsic motivation and, and getting <coughs> students themselves to want to learn and all that, and the flipped learning, that's it's a, a perfect match, perfect match, it's really worth it. Beautiful. Uh, here I am at home with a sick child and, uh, and walking them through some form of breathing exercise that, uh, that I do every morning. Um, and I asked them afterwards, I, we've done, the, done this a couple of times, and I asked them afterwards, uh, how did it work compared to me being in the classroom? Better. <laughs> <laughs> they liked it better to have me. At, on the screen, uh, I don't know how to interpret that. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to go into this teaching in periods. We we, we we just asked the the both the children, the students, and their parents how, how they experienced it, and everybody sold. Focusing on fewer topics for short period of times and and finishing all the assessment after that, it's a way to go. We will never go back to. Uh, doing 40 minutes of this topic, 40 minutes of this topic, 80 minutes of this topic, we will never go back to that. Both students and, and, and parents just are really sold after seven months. And yeah, and, and, and then because probably most of you are, are working with students, uh, teachers, etc. And uh, I, I would say that we have had an instant sex with our <coughs> idea. It's really worked well. Uh, happy students, happy Parents, uh, good results on some uh, tests, you know, on on, on a big scale in Iceland. Uh, but what really explains our success, I think, is that our gratitude for for the students, because we were starting a new school out of thin air. We 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 weren't connected to anything, any organization or or a kindergarten school or anything, just out of thin air. So. People really had to make a leap of faith coming to us you know, and really trust us. And uh, we were so grateful for them to come that we really from day one expressed our love to them. And they felt it. And uh, I always tell others, others who are working in, 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 you know, in schools where we always get you know, new kids coming in every year, every year, you know, this one goes out next next pack of you know, kids coming in, just uh, find a way to be grateful and, and allow yourself to love your kids that you're teaching. That's, that's been our, I think, main key in, in our success. Uh, and I almost made it. Thank you so much. Questions for the revolutionary guy, Christian Hommer. Uh, yes. I was wondering, the teachers, uh, do they come in and uh, are they just kind of uh, teaching a couple of lessons, or how, how does that work? So with this, uh, we only have two, this winter we only had two teachers, so we really had need, needed, uh, you know, Swiss army knives. Okay. Somebody who could everything, could do everything. Okay. And uh, they, they, they matched each other really good, they were strong in some areas, but they, but the, the good thing about the flipped learning is that, okay, you have to understand it, but you might not have to be the best one to teach it, you know, because there are, we have, okay, we have, couple of videos here explaining this. No, take a look at that. Uh, so, I don't know if that answers the questions. Okay, so we are about to uh, come to an end. Uh, we are supposed to go in where we started, the big room, just for a couple of minutes. But Christian Omar, thank you so much. And uh, I think it is the most revolutionary change in our elementary schools here in Iceland. And after this one year, uh, the survey you showed me from your, both the parents and your students is very promising for what you're doing. I congratulate you on that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the P6 of the study. Thank you.